Hello, and welcome to the 2020 Warland High School commencement celebration. We thank you for joining us to honor our graduates. With the unprecedented events of 2020 changing our everyday lives, we find ourselves celebrating our graduates in a different format as well. The class of 2020 will be linked forever with this historic time and the impact it has had and will continue to have on our lives. However, we choose to remember the class of 2020 more for who they were and what they accomplished. They were academics, athletes, singers, musicians, artists, actors, and yes, some of them characters. They achieved historic accomplishments for our school in the arenas of athletics and activities. So please join us in celebrating an outstanding group of young people that we are proud to call our graduates, warriors, and the Warland High School class of 2020. At this time, we're excited to present our Academic Achievement Awards. Each year, we award plaques for the valedictorian and salutatorian of the graduating class. We're very excited to be able to present three such award winners this year. We're very excited to present the salutatorian for the class of 2020, Tatum Zimmerman. faculty, fellow graduates, and various groups of ten or less. Today is the day to be thankful and to be inspired. Today, let's be thankful for the community that we live in that has made this day special despite the current circumstances. During these times, our community is teaching us how to adapt to change and to be flexible during your times of uncertainty. As graduates, we may face many uncertainties, both immediate and in the distant future. However, uncertainty is another word for opportunity. Today, we are given the opportunity to venture out into the world and find our own path. I could go back and reminisce about the last four years. Instead, I think it's more important to focus on where we will be in the next four years. Whether it's teaching future generations, building rockets at NASA, finding a cure for cancer, or fighting for our country, all of us must make sure the word happiness is associated with what we do. In this goal-oriented society, setting an objective to work toward is often a powerful motivator that drives professional and personal progress. In theory, this may not sound like a bad thing, but what if we achieve that goal? Life doesn't really look or feel any different. When we get too caught up in future outcomes, we risk neglecting our own happiness and our precious time with family and friends. We seek goal after goal, hoping that something will make us happy. Yes, as cliche as it sounds, it's the journey, not the destination, that teaches us lessons, reveals simple pleasures, and instills in us a genuine internal sense of contentment. It is amazing that a worn-out cliché such as life is a journey, not a destination, can be cemented at the center of so much truth. In 10 years, it won't matter whether we got C's in high school rather than A's or B's, or if we were the top athlete in the school. To quote President George W. Bush, to those of you who received honors, awards, and distinctions, I say well done. And to the C students, I say you too may one day be the President of the United States. In 10 years, we will remember the fun times of high school and our friends who were with us along the way. And when our time on this earth is over, we will remember the people that made our lives full and the moments that filled our souls. Some of us may continue our education and some may stop here. But whatever you may do, I urge you to find your definition of happiness and live that. Fellow graduates, I urge you to base your goals around your own happiness and let contentment be your greatest goal. Congratulations, happy graduation, and best of luck to the Warland High School class of 2020. Thank you, Tatum, and once again, congratulations on your outstanding academic performance. At this time, we're pleased to transition into presenting the co-valedictorians of the class of 2020. We'll begin by announcing our first valedictorian, Carter Dunham. I'd like to start off by acknowledging that in these types of speeches, being brief and to the point is for the best. So that's what I plan on doing, and hopefully I can make it somewhat worthwhile for everyone listening. So here goes nothing. As Charles Dickens once wrote, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. This quote, if nothing else, should at least please Mr. McGee. 
but I think that has some relevance to the graduates of 2020. Our high school careers can be embodied in this quote. Even though we may be going through some difficult times, we must be cautious not to allow our current situation to cloud our judgment of the bigger picture. Our high school careers will filled with just as much joy as there was pain. For every failed test, there was a winning game. For every bad day, there was a good one. For everything that we could not experience, there were things that we could. Even with our year cut short, we need to acknowledge all of the good we are able to experience. Every victory, whether it be in sports or some other activity. Every day listening to Durr's wild stories or Gunderson's unpredictable announcements. Every late night with friends getting into a little too much trouble or maybe just the right amount. Today, we remember all of those things, as well as the bad, for it is the pain and the sacrifice that will make us grow. We must move forward in our lives and allow ourselves to grow into hardworking, boundary-breaking, kind people. It is imperative to remind ourselves today that we are saying goodbye to the easiest years of our lives. We thank our parents for all of their hard work, love, and support. A building is only as strong as its foundation, and as our parents, you are our foundation. Make no mistake, though, your work with us is not yet over. Be prepared for us to fail. Ready yourselves to witness us make the same stupid mistakes that you once made, from paying our own bills with what little money we may or may not have, to applying for new jobs that we never quite feel qualified for, to never knowing how to quite work that stupid laundry machine. We'll need to make, we'll need your continued guidance and wisdom as we navigate this new experience. Going forward, we'll soon realize that nothing will be handed to us. Nothing in this world is free. We will need to be brave, strong, and courageous if we are to be successful. This will only be possible with your help. Also, on behalf of the graduates, we thank everyone at Worland High School, Middle School, and each elementary school. Each and every one of you, from support staff to teachers to administrators, have touched us individually in too many ways to list. But also, we must thank our community. It never ceases to amaze me how far people will go to help each other in times of need. In these difficult and uncertain times, our fellow citizens of Worland have been incredibly supportive, and we owe them and the administrators a great debt of gratitude for crafting this special, unique, and unforgettable community-wide celebration of us graduates. You are all appreciated. We recognize the time and effort you've put into us, and now we are ready for the real world or at least we think we are. Finally, as graduates, we have each other to thank. This was a long journey, but this is no time to tire. There is a longer ladder yet to climb, and we have our whole lives ahead of us to grow, explore, and create a better world. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you, Carter, and also congratulations to you as well for your outstanding academic performance and accomplishments throughout your high school career. And finally, we're to our last valedictorian. We're very proud to introduce the, as the final co-valedictorian of the class of 2020, Caleb Frazier. Greetings to all of the family, friends, and community members that are able to see this video. It has been an interesting past couple of months, and this alternative isn't exactly ideal. However, I am grateful to still stand here giving this speech. Throughout high school, I have stepped into many different roles, including student body president, drum major, National Honor Society president, W Club vice president, room captain, and team captain for cross country. But today, I am pleased to be known as a valedictorian for the class of 2020. In order to truly appreciate the present moment that we have arrived at, I think it is important to reflect on the past. Growing up, our parents have watched us go through many different stages. They tolerated us through the terrible twos, they lost their patience during the no stage, and they really wanted to ship us away when we hit puberty. Of all the stages we grew through, however, I think the most important is the stage where we responded to everything with why. why we would ask, why does the sun rise? Why do people age? And why do we have to eat vegetables? This phase, unique to the others, is the one that I found that I didn't grow out of. 
At least I'd like to think that I'm not in my terrible 18 phase anyway. As I progressed throughout high school, I began to realize that the question why was on my mind almost all the time. I would find myself asking, why am I staying up until two in the morning writing an essay? Why am I taking these hard classes? Why do I step out as a leader in these situations? And why should I not drop out? Yes, believe it or not, your own valedictorian even thought about leaving school and living in a van down by the river. I found that every time that I asked myself why, I would use it as motivation. Not only did it help me find my purpose and reasoning in all of the madness, but it helped drive me forward towards my goals. It seemed that every time that I asked why, I was given a chance to overcome a problem and progress in my life. On July 20th, 2013, I had one of the biggest whys of my life. On this day, my father had passed away, and I had asked myself why I should continue in life. Why should I wake up every day when I awake in a world without my dad? Why should I continue to trudge along when all I ever feel is sorrow and anguish? Sitting in the sea of why that I had created brought me into a philosophical state of confusion as a mere sixth grader, and it seemed that there wasn't much hope. It seemed that no kind words or action from those around me could fix a hole in my life. I continued on in life, trudging along, until I had a realization. I had spent so much time in my life asking the question, why, that I didn't even realize that the word had a partner to it. Because. Why should I continue to go on? Because he would want me to persevere and make him the proudest dad in heaven. Because he would want me to be, because he would be so excited to know his son was a valedictorian and getting a full ride to an out-of-state college. Because all he would ever ask of me is to grow up and be a better man than he was. So when you find yourself asking why you should do that read-write packet for Dr. McGee, take the extra moment to check in on someone, study for a test, or essentially why you should persevere to achieve any of your goals, tell yourself because. Tell yourself because for so many reasons. As we all leave this high school in such an unsettling manner, I hope that all of us go on to find out what our because is. Find the things that make you lose track of time and the people you never grow tired of. Find out the things that are your answer when someone asks you why. For in a world with a million whys, a man with one because is unstoppable. I speak on behalf of the entire class of 2020 here at Worland High School when I say that these four years will be unforgettable, especially with the way that they came to an end. Despite the chaos and negative aspects that came with this pandemic, I am truly grateful for all of the lessons that have to be learned from it. I have seen how much our community has come together to do little acts of kindness everywhere, and I couldn't begin to express how blessed I really feel being a part of this town. My heart truly aches for every single person that has been negatively affected by this pandemic, and I say to each person that we will get through this and we will persevere to better days. I say this statement confidently because I have seen that so many members of our community have already found their because. Thank you, Worland High School, for letting me serve you in any chance that I was able to get. It has been truly an honor to call myself a warrior, and there is no other class that I would rather be valedictorian of. With all this being said, I think it is time for us to make like Scooby-Doo and split it up, gang. Thank you. To our dearest principal, Mr. Sanford, beloved seniors, commenters, visitors today, a very pleasant welcome. I have the honor to introduce our very astound and generous guest of honor. I am honored and even more proud to say that she is a former teacher of ours. Though it has been a couple of years, I know she has left a touch on all of our hearts. Our guest is a graduate of the University of Wyoming and became a part of the Alumni Edition in 2017. She has been teaching for almost eight years now in our own Washakie County. She was named Washakie County Master Teacher slash Teacher of the Year in 2016. Along with that profound accomplishment, she was also been nominated for Teacher of the Year for the State of Wyoming in 2016. She loves her students and we all remember the copious amount of vocab words she taught us. We all probably still have those meaningful letters she wrote us at the end of our seventh grade year. The woman we know as Miss Becker has found the love of her life and married her wonderful husband. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to present to you our beloved guest of honor today, Miss Elizabeth Hansen. Welcome to the class of 2020 commencement celebration. To say that I am honored to be here speaking today is an understatement. This is the pinnacle of my teaching career, an opportunity to celebrate these munchkins, a nickname I gave their class when they were my seventh graders. While this is not the graduation ceremony any of us has pictured, the one factor that does remain unshakable, even amidst such uncertain times, is the unwavering love and unyielding belief 
the Warland community, your families, and your friends hold for you, our sweet seniors. Each of you is the epitome of resilience, the definition of dedication to your education. Class of 2020, change is inevitable and growth guaranteed, especially under such unfavorable conditions. From this experience, you have been refined and polished, ultimately prepared for whatever uncharted territory and unexpected circumstances may fall onto your path for the rest of your life. As Warland Warriors, a title you have now earned for life, you have been armed with the necessary skill set to obtain victory, even in the darkest of times. Your journey so far, though challenging at times, has led you to this moment where your success is cause for recognition and celebration. Sometimes, when you're in a dark place, it feels as though you've been buried, when actually you have been planted. This quote by Christine Kane could not, in my opinion, be more relevant to your current reality. Just like seeds, which have been planted, the last few months of your senior year have left you feeling vulnerable and anxious. It has felt dark and uncomfortable, but the light is at the end of the tunnel, and you are quickly approaching. You see, you have not been buried with no end in sight. Rather, you have been planted, the outcome of which far surpasses anything you can imagine now. While you will pursue different paths, one thing is certain. Your futures will be nothing short of extraordinary. Seniors, you will change the world, be it through science, technology, arts, and music, the agriculture industry, on the field, rink, or court, from skyscraping offices or within the walls of a classroom, a clinic, or an office cubicle through culinary creations or construction crews, from stages or pulpits, within volunteer organizations, from working on the front lines to completely behind the scenes. The world is your oyster. Like a pearl, I know you will emerge from any untimely mess of grit and darkness, allowing it to ultimately polish you, leaving you with inarguable potential, beauty, and promise. Recently, I encountered a quote that resonated with me. Its message was simple. When in darkness, if you cannot find the light, look around, for you, in fact, may be the light. And it is you, seniors. You are the light for all of us. Your futures are scintillating, shimmering with potential. And today, you are the shining stars, illuminating our community. Trust me when I say, this community and all of those from around the world who love you, we've got you, we believe in you, we love you, and we are here to celebrate you. You are the light, and you are unstoppable. As you prepare for your next chapter, I want to encourage you to remain undaunted by the unfamiliarity of the endeavors you embark upon. Remember, you are warriors. You were made to conquer the seemingly impossible, armed with your faith, humility, integrity, and sense of self. You will remain beacons of encouragement and strength, testaments of trying times. Your imprint will be everlasting. At this time, I would like to share with you my top five pieces of advice for this new adventure laid out before you. Number one. May you never lose your inner kid at heart or your appreciation for life's simple pleasures. May you discover daily opportunities to engage in those activities which bring you the most joy. May you find cause for celebration in all things. May you still call home to share news with those who love you most. May you still get excited about your birthdays, shoot out of bed on Christmas morning, eager for the day's festivities. May you always choose joy above all else. Number two, live in the now and take lots of pictures. 
Even those moments that may not seem the most candid, perhaps even the blandest, seemingly most basic moments of all, those are the ones to embrace. Trust me, it is the photos my mom snapped of my brothers and I in our pajamas watching Saturday morning cartoons or hunting feverishly for Easter eggs in the backyard. Those pictures now are priceless to me. The moments you will crave eventually are the ones that you may no longer have access to, but did for many days, weeks, and years. The way your bedroom looks before you leave for college, or your mom making breakfast, your dad changing the oil on his truck, or your little brother playing with Legos when you are home for Christmas break. Take a picture of the view out your first dorm room window. These are the moments that will become invaluable to you. Seize them. Number three, maintain a gritty, unshakable faith. Be flexible to change while also remaining faithful to your values. You will be tested, and at times your worlds will be rocked. Everything will appear unaligned and imbalanced. You will be ejected from your comfort zone and prompted to adopt new norms. It is during these unforeseeable yet inevitable challenges I urge you to remember. The same boiling water that can soften the potato is also capable of hardening the egg. It is not our circumstances that make a difference. It's what we are made of. Faith, in times of frustration and fear, is key. Hold fast to your faith and grasp for grace. Number four. Adopt a lifelong learner mentality. This mindset does not necessarily involve incessant studying or becoming the most knowledgeable in a particular field. It does not require discovering solutions to intimidating algorithms that others may have deemed impossible. While I absolutely encourage you to stretch your minds and strive for excellence in all you do, identifying as a lifelong learner involves more than that. It requires actively pursuing new experiences and a ceaseless dedication to your ambitions, delighting in your daydreams, reactivating your imaginations. I wish for all of you to have an unquenchable curiosity and an insatiable desire to learn and experience more. In the words of Jonathan Swift, may you live all the days of your life. And adding on, May you truly be living and experiencing and not simply existing, as Oscar Wilde may dispute. This includes being open to failure and accepting constructive criticism as an opportunity to become better. Recognize that practice makes progress and it is all part of the process. Number five, exude gratitude and humility. Your success up to this point has been a group effort. All along, you had a designated, devoted cheering section camped out on your field of success. We have all come together to witness the culmination of your hard work with our unwavering belief in you. So, as you move forward, remain humble and embrace any opportunity which allows you to express gratitude. I promise you, it will never be a waste of your time. In closing, I would like you to consider O. Henry's definition of a true adventurer. The true adventurer goes forth to meet and greet unknown fate. By this definition, class of 2020, you are true adventurers. Your futures may be uncertain, but they are radiant with possibility and promise. The territory upon which you embark may be unchartered, but you are prepared. In the words of Jennifer Lee, be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on fire. With my love, admiration, and gratitude always, I wish for you to carpe the heck out of this DM. Congrats to the class of 2020. Welcome, distinguished guests, parents, families, friends, educators, and most especially, members of the graduating class. As your superintendent, it is an honor to share with you the special happiness of this occasion. This commencement ceremony is different because of the coronavirus pandemic. Our hope is that you enjoy this day in spite of the limits set by social distancing. Today is still a great day. 
Graduation is a time to celebrate past achievements and to set new goals. Graduation serves also to remind us how our successes reflect more than just our efforts and how much certain people mean to us. Your parents share this day with you, their pride in you, and their joy in your achievements. Parents from the trustees, administration, and teachers, thank you for a job well done. Your teachers share this afternoon with you in a special way. For them, it marks the culmination of a joint venture. Their dedication, scholarship, and commitment have served to challenge you, setting before you a standard by which your efforts and successes could be measured. Today, we are grateful for your success. May God bless you and protect you. At this time, it is with great pleasure that I confirm that the students' names submitted to you and the Board of Trustees have met the requirements of graduation set forth at Warland High School in full. And I proudly present to you, Mr. Bryant, the Warland High School Class of 2020. Thank you, Mr. Sanford. Parents, family, friends, and 2020 graduates. This year has been one that we will never forget. 2020 will go down as one of the biggest years in history. And I want to tell you how proud we are of you. This past few months will not define you, but in my opinion, will make each of you a stronger person. I want to remind you all of the positives that you've had in your senior year. Your class, the class of 2020, has made a difference through all of your sports and other activities. You have made Worland proud. Here are just a few of those highlights. Football playoffs, girls, state runner-up in volleyball, champs in state drama, superior in band, boys regional basketball champs, and 21 and one. And just tons of individual awards. And I can't tell you how proud the board is of each of you. Then came social distancing, school from home, and now virtual graduation. Wow, class of 2020, you really have made a difference. On behalf of the Washkie County School District Board of Trustees, Dave Tomarop, Terry Logan, Dwayne Whitlock, Sarah Lundgren, Dean Dupree, Susan Sherman, and I, Don Bryant, and Superintendent Dave Nicholas, we accept the class of 2020. And guess what? Today's attendance, the virtual attendance, 20,220. Your graduating seniors want to thank you for all of your support. Carter Dunham. Caleb Brian Robert Frazier. Tatum Marie Zimmerman.
Julie Anna Seidel. Colby Allen. Talon Anderson. Jonathan David Anderson. Marcus Ariza. Alec S. Bakaria. Nicholas Bauer. Carter J. Brown. Isabel Faye Berkey. Cody Butterfield. Peter Calderon. Gabriel Isaiah Cardenas. Aisha Dawn Carson.
Madison Elizabeth Comstock. Raymond Lawrence Krim. Adriana De Labau. Dominique Haley Davis. Kaylin Yvette Denise. Myra Isabel Denise. Rachel Lynn Duffy. Zoe Renee Fernandez. Hector Farrell. Logan M. Foot. Raylin M. Franck. Nayeli Garay. Richard Tomas Garay.
Kira Ann Garcia. Kenzie Sue Getsfree. Dylan Michael Hanford. Dominic Hartley. Brandon William Hahn. Gavin Brody Hernandez. Haley Dawn Hilmer. Chase John Hoffman. Noah J. Hunt. Shayla M. Kaiser. Donovan L. Cook. Luke A. Lamb.
Miles C. Limmer. Benjamin Dash Lloyd. Jordan Logan. Stig H. Ludwig. Jaime Adrian Luna. Connor David Macy. Sydney Josephine Martinez. Madeline Marie Martinson. Sage Bailey Mascaro. Kinley Marie McClure. Mackenzie Dane McGonagall. Elizabeth Nicole McIntosh. Devin Marcial Mercado. Joshua Mills.
Nathan J. Mitchell. Luke Jordan Mortimer. Cesar Munoz. Andrew J. Nelson. Bailey Louise Newfer. Jacob Daniel Newell. Anthony Silas Padilla. Brianna Pearl Para. Danny Ramon. Shelby Ann Ramos. Alejandra Cadence Rice. Maria Diana Rodriguez. Eric Yamil Romo.
Josie Marie Rose. Brady Patrick Salzman. Regan Edward Schmelzer. Ashley Lynn Schrag. Justin T. Schrag. Hallie R. Schumacher. Austin Talon Sherman. Andrea K. Smith. Brianne Irene Swing. Jada E. Timmons. Branson Michael Townsend. Elizabeth R. Voss. Cameron K. Wagner. Riley Michelle Wagner.
Cassandra Faye Ward. Danny Ray Warner. Kate Wassum. Daniel Patrick Wyrick. Megan Elizabeth White. Dylan J. Wolf. Wyatt Charles Wyman.